This week on Maker Update, casting eyeballs, a chocolate vending machine made from Legos, 2001 cosplay, Wi-Fi baby, feeding no face, and handmade sprockets. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. Happy Halloween! I hope your day is filled with fun costumes and cheap candy, and I feel like it's my last chance to really pack an episode here full of Halloween-related projects. So let's get started with the project of the week. I've been keeping my eye on Will Cogley recently. Like me, he's become a bit obsessed with creating servo-controlled animatronic eyes, but he's really taken things to another level with his thorough instructables guide and video on casting super realistic eyeballs using 3D printed blanks. Will includes all the files you need to print up both the eye blanks and the mold you need to cast the blank in resin as a final step for the perfect glassy eye. It's not a quick or easy process, but the results are so cool that I'm willing to give it a shot. Will shows how he paints the irises, glues down bits of red thread for the veins, casts the results, and then polishes it to a shiny finish by chucking it into a drill and buffing it smooth. What excites me just as much is that these eyes fit into what looks like an incredible animatronic mechanism that Will has teased in a previous video. Once that design comes out, expect me to geek out on this all over again. More projects, JK Brickworks posted a video on this awesome, adorable candy vending machine made from Legos. He goes over all the mechanical elements that push out the candy bars as well as the Mindstorms EV3 system of buttons and motors that make it work. I can't imagine many of us have the patience to make something like this out of Legos, but the underlying mechanics and the cool design touches could be adapted for whatever fabrication technique works best for you. On Instructables, Badger1 has a great write-up of his quest to build a replica spacesuit costume from 2001 A Space Odyssey. His guide goes over every aspect of the suit, including sewing and modifying a custom jumpsuit, but the part I like best is the retro-tastic chest control panel and the jetpack that goes on the back. Every part of that, 3D printed, sanded, primed, painted, and detailed with labels and lights. He even 3D printed the helmet. Unfortunately, the guide does not include the 3D files, but reading the comments, it does look like he may be working on a way to sell them if you're interested. I also took a look back through some of Badger's older Instructables and found a great one on creating your own Star Wars style pilot chess box. Again, something about those chunky vintage sci-fi interfaces just makes me happy. Instead of 3D printing, his take on this uses pieces of acrylic that he cut out on a bandsaw and then glued together using a template as a guide. All the electronics and LEDs hook into a single Arduino Uno. Finally, possibly the creepiest project this week, check out this doll that Kabu hacked with a mini set of Wi-Fi controlled animatronic eyes. This build uses a simplified 3D printed single servo mechanism that just moves the eyes left and right, plus another servo that turns the neck. The project uses an inexpensive ESP8266 based board that can be programmed using Arduino code. He also includes a version of the project that uses a PIR motion sensor to trigger the creepy doll automatically when someone enters the room. No thank you. Now for a few tips and tools I found this week. I can't not give a shout out to Adam Savage's video on the construction of his costume of No Face from the movie Spirited Away. This is actually his second No Face costume, but this version includes the ravenous mouth from when the character transforms into an eating machine. From a tips perspective, especially with Halloween in mind, I think it's worth paying close attention to how Adam talks about the mechanism that's behind the mouth design he chose after a lot of trial and error. What he got was a mechanism that operates a layer of lips as it opens the mouth, giving it a more realistic look. I also love the side mission here of Jen Schachter and Mel Ho creating fantastical foam food for No Face to Eat. Really, the process of how they transformed scrap furniture foam into beautiful and grotesque airbrush food was worthy of its own video and could offer everything you need to create foam Halloween props. I've got a new video out going over how I've been using the Pololu Maestro board to bring projects to life. If you like the idea of working with servos to create lifelike movement in your projects, but you dread the mess of code in Arduino libraries that you need to make something you're happy with, I'll show you how this board takes the pain out of the process. I've also got a new video up on cool tools with artist and model maker Chris Rummel on his favorite types of glue to use when he's putting his models together. On Gareth's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, he's got some spooky last minute Halloween tips and costume ideas, plus a great tip from Sarah Connor Tangway 
I'm using putty or modeling clay to mask out round edges of things that you need to paint that tape just can't handle. Via Make Magazine's Mike Sinisi on Twitter, I saw this 3D printed swatch on Thingiverse by Roykin7. With this around, you can have a reference for common thicknesses you might use in a 3D design. On Hackaday, Lewin Day shows how he's able to make a custom sprocket to make his electric scooter faster. He used a free piece of software called Sprocketeer 2.0 to get the exact template for the sprocket geometry and then he went at it with an angle grinder and a rotary tool to get the thickness and tapering just right. Speaking of Hackaday, the Hackaday Supercon is coming soon, November 15th through the 17th in Pasadena, California. There's some great speakers and workshops planned, so check it out. And for you East Coasters, the Rochester, New York Maker Fair is coming up on November 23rd at the Rochester Convention Center. Don't miss that. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, they've got a new guide up on Maker.io on how to choose the right cable and connectors for your project. USB, ribbon cables, D-sub, audio jacks. It's kind of neat to see all the different PC board mounting types for these connections. Each of them links into the DigiKey catalog for a deep dive into all of the available options. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, get on the Maker Update email list to get extra projects emailed out to you each week. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. You can uh, catch this show next week over on the Adafruit channel for the monthly Adafruit edition. But you can also just sit tight right here and uh, we'll be back. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.